guys, if you can't tell by my voice, I've been pretty sick this week, but I was determined to get a video out to you guys nonetheless, and I figured it would only be suitable to answer the question, why do we get fevers? So let's dive into it. A fever can simply be anything different than the average 98.6 degrees that the body is normally at, but since the body can fluctuate a degree or two during the day due to environmental factors, that isn't a very accurate definition. A better way to characterize a fever is by oral temperatures higher than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but since oral temperatures still aren't incredibly accurate, the best way to measure a temperature is to go through the ear or rectum, and a fever then would clock in at temperatures at 101 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Fevers are of course most commonly caused by viruses, but they can of course be caused by other things such as toxins in the environment, a messed up hypothalamus, or of course a heat stroke. But as the number one cause of fever today is a virus, that's what we'll be focusing on today. When a virus infects your body, it oftentimes travels through your bloodstream. But thankfully for us, our body has white blood cells. These guys travel around our body, and when they find a harmful bacteria, they produce pyrogens that travel to our brain. These pyrogens then travel to the hypothalamus area in our brain, the area that regulates our body temperature. Our hypothalamus in turn then cranks up our body temperature and gives us the fever. But what's the purpose of making our body feel miserable? Well, most bacteria that lives in our body lives at the nice and cozy 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit that our body normally functions at. So, when the body heats up, the bacteria either stops reproducing or dies, making our body get better over time. But with this information in mind, a controversial topic is brought up. Should we take medication to lower fevers? The answer is no, unless it's a dire situation, because by lowering body temperatures, you're allowing the infection to continue to grow and hurt us. And let's not forget about those nasty side effects. Some side effects of ibuprofen, the active ingredient in most fever-reducing medicines, are, wait for it, chest pains, weakness, upset stomach, diarrhea, rash, dizziness, headache, pain, numbness, bloody stools, shortness of breath, stirred speech, seizures, itching, and chills. So, next time you're taking a sick day off of work, Put that medicine away and let your body do its work. Disclaimer, the statements and ideas provided here in this video have not been approved by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. These statements are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease, so if you're having any problems with your body, be sure to visit a professional healthcare advisor. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, this week I've been pretty sick, so sorry for the kind of sick voice and the shorter video, but hopefully next week will be a much better video. Once again, thanks for watching, and if you would like to see some other content by Science Saturdays, be sure to click on the pictures below. Science Saturdays, bringing free education to the modern world.